Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. Today I'm going to address two plants that to me are very different, but are commonly confused by a lot of people. People will lump these two plants today into the category of rhododendron, or they'll call them mountain laurel, or they'll call them laurels, and then there's a lot of colloquial or local names throughout Virginia and the Virginia mountains. The species that's behind me that's flowering today is mountain laurel, and that would be the correct term to identify this species or the correct common name. Its scientific name is Calamia latifolia. It's not a rhododendron. It's a different category. But again, these are often grouped together. So this particular plant is flowering now, and mountain laurel usually flowers well before rhododendron flowers. They're often confused because they have evergreen leaves, they're shrubs, they flower, and they're often growing in the woods together. Mountain laurel growing right behind me here, and on my right I have rhododendron, and they're often side by side in the woods. So today we're gonna to look at mountain laurel specifically, because it's flowering, and then another day when rhododendron starts flowering, I'll do an episode on that. So let's take a look at these flowers and these leaves. And before I do, let's compare this plant and its leaves with rhododendron. So hang on, and I'm gonna move over to look at rhododendron. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this basic. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So I just moved about 15 feet away. And behind me is rhododendron. And I took with me a mountain laurel leaf. So let's compare these leaves. Here is a rhododendron leaf. Here is a mountain laurel leaf. Notice the difference in their size. They're both, however, dark green on the top and light green on the bottom. They both have a similar shape, but the rhododendron leaf is decidedly much larger than the mountain laurel leaf. The rhododendron leaf is also really sort of stout and thick and leathery feel to it. And this leaf is not as thick and leathery as the rhododendron leaf. So today I'm going to talk about mountain laurel specifically. And when rhododendron flowers, I'll do another episode on rhododendron. And again, compare the two so you can keep track of which is which. So here's a quick look at my rhododendron before we step away and focus today on mountain laurel. And you can see that my rhododendron is all completely cut off to about the height a deer can reach when standing on the ground. And the deer here in Floyd County have made a severe impact on the rhododendron. And you can see that there are no leaves growing above the height that a deer can reach. They've really decimated this. So in the winter time, deer really like eating rhododendron. So here, a few steps away, is mountain laurel. So both of these plants, again, are evergreens. They both live in the woods. They both si live side by side. They both have similar shaped leaves. The first distinguishing feature to observe is the difference in leaf size. But let's take a closer look at these flowers. Both rhododendron and mountain laurel produce amazing flowers, and here is a group of flowers. And if we look inside the individual flowers, we can see that there is a pistil, which is the center female part that will produce a seed eventually, and around it are stamens. They're on the outside of this particular flower. Here's a close-up of the leaves again. And you can see that the leaves are never any longer than your finger 
whereas in rhododendron they're very very long one of the other cool things about the flowers is what they look like before they open isn't that an amazing structure i don't even know how you would you would describe that so that's an unopened flower and they sometimes are, are pinkish this uh, uh, mountain laurel is white and we can look into the center of this flower again and see the female pistil in the middle and the stamens on the side now i want you to look and see how those stamens are curved and the tip of them that has the pollen is kind of embedded in the petal of the flower and that is a very important point because those things kind of look like they're spring loaded mountain laurel flowers do a really amazing thing in order to be sure that the pollen on the stamens is carried from flower to flower by the bees that visit the flower to get nectar so this is a relationship between bees and the plant that has evolved over a long period of time. Now in this flower, notice that these stamens are in place in their little pocket while these stamens are all tangled up. Well, watch what happens when I touch this stamen. And this stamen, which I think has already been fired. So all the stamens in this flower have been fired. What happens when a bee lands in that flower and attempts to push its way down into the center where the nectar has been developed for the purpose of that bee's visit, these stamens will pop out when disturbed by the bee and smack the bee in the rump and make sure its pollen is deposited on it. Most of these flowers have already been visited by a bee. But let's see if I can show you on this flower what happens. Boom. 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 Notice how these stamens are spring-loaded. And when I disturb them with my stick, they pop out like a spring and wrap right across to the other side pollen can be thrown by those spring traps up to 15 centimeters scientists have actually spent some time measuring that let's see that again so here's another flower might let the stick represent a bee that comes in there bang So some of these spring harder than others, some of them are timed better, and this is something that you can try if you find a blooming mountain laurel flower. So let's review the anatomy of this flower. This center part is the female part, the pistil. These are stamens around them made up of a filament and an anther, and on the anther is the tip that carries the pollen. And these are spring-loaded so that when a bee lands on this flower, these will spring out and tap the bee on his furry bottom and ensure that pollen is carried from plant to plant. So this is, <coughs> so this is mountain laurel in full bloom. And you can see that when the flowers are closed up, they look very interesting. Here is a closed up flower. And here is a flower that has opened. Notice the uh, pistil in the center and the stamens are in the corners of this plant. So this is <coughs> so this is mountain laurel in full bloom and you can see that when the flowers are closed up 
They look very interesting. Here is a closed up flower. And here is a flower that has opened. Notice the uh, pistil in the center and the stamens are in the corners of this plant. So let's review what you learned today. So in the Appalachian Mountains, there's two kinds of flowering evergreen shrub that grow here. And both produce beautiful flowers. Mountain laurel is the one with the smaller leaves. Rhododendron that we saw over there has the larger leaves. Mountain laurel flowers first. And mountain laurel has this unique ability where the stamens of the plant become spring-loaded inside the flower. And when the bee comes and visits, those stamens can pop out. And you can try it. If you find a, a flowering mountain laurel, take a twig and see if you can make the stamens pop just like a, a bee would. I've found that some of them pop out really well and some not so well. I think it uh, depends on the age of the flower and the timing of the flower parts. But go out and see what you can find. See if you can find mountain laurel. Mountain laurel and rhododendron are commonly planted in people's yards and gardens. So you can find it everywhere. It's a native plant. Both of them are native to the Appalachian Mountains. You can find them in the forests in the state of Virginia. You can also find them growing in people's yards. A lot of the uh, species that are in yards are cultivars or have been bred for particular characteristics. So some of the ones that you find in people's yards are not native. If you want to plant some in your yard, ask your nursery if you can get some native plants to plant there. So the next episode, when rhododendron flowers, I'll do an episode on rhododendron and we can compare mountain laurel and rhododendron again at that time. See you later. I hope you enjoyed nature in your backyard today.